Thank you to Game Work Create for being a channel partner. Looking for a Kickstarter game you missed or 3D printed minis? Game Work Create has a huge selection available, all at a fair price. Use the link in the description below to check out all that Game Work Create has to offer. What's up, Rockstars? Today I have Steam Watchers from Mythic Games. Uh, this will be kind of exciting to see. I saw a lot of similarities between this and DEI, but I also saw a lot of differences. And I was a big fan of DEI, so excited to take a look at this. And of course, their stuff is always looking so good. Solomon Kane was like amazing looking. So really excited to kind of dive into this. I guess, well, I don't know. I guess we'll just start. Now, as always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members. It is through their financial support that this channel is possible. As you guys all know, this is an expensive hobby. And while I do get some games to look at, there are plenty more every single month that I back, which means hundreds of dollars are spent every month. So you guys have content because I can actually look at the games. I can talk about them. I can discuss them. I can do all that stuff. So if you appreciate what I bring here and the honest coverage I have or you hear my honest opinion, not my wallet's opinion, because it, no game company told me to say anything to you. Well, there's a link down below for that if you choose to give. And if so, I'd really appreciate it. If not, that's fine too. A simple like or a comment can help and go a long ways. And it lets me know that this video was helpful for you, which is always a good thing. Because at the end of the day, I make these for you guys. Very community-driven channel here. So, hope you get something out of this. This, I suspect... Yep, is the neoprene mat that they have. Now, one thing, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about my little pet peeves, but one of them is stitched neoprene mats. I always, always look for stitched, and typically, if it's not stitched, I don't buy it. Neoprene mats are kind of expensive anyway. They typically go from 25 to 40 bucks, sometimes even more. It depends on the size and a myriad of other things, but they can be kind of expensive, and, uh, if they're going to, I want to make sure that they don't start to fray at the end or curl up too much or anything like that, which you get if you have like a mouse pad. You can see that when you do it a lot. So ideally, I love and adore and play the game a lot. And so ideally, I need that stitched mat. Uh, mat. And I have confirmed with them, as far as I know, Mythic Games is doing stitched on all of their neoprene mats for every single game, which is nice. All right. So there it is. Oh, it's huge. But you can see it. All right, now I need to see it. You guys already saw it. Let me see it for once. Uh, this is nice. Like, the color is actually really good. Um, one of the complaints I had before with Solomon Kane is just how dark it was. I, I mean, I'm fine with it dark. It just kind of needs to bleed away and just kind of be in the background, which is fine. It's not like a map like this. Um, but I still would have liked them to be a little bit lighter so I could have seen it more. But the uh, Super Fantasy Brawl was good, and this looks good, too. Uh, the pretty quality is nice. It's not too grainy. You always get a little bit... On neoprene mats, it's just how they're made, how they're stitched and all that, right? You see the stitches. I feel like looking at a close picture and seeing the pixels a little bit. But, um, no, the stitching looks nice. It's not too tight. It's not curling up or snagging anything. It's it's really big. The uh, glue parts where they, like right here, is where they started the stitching. Uh, you probably can't see that, but you can see it when you get yours. Um, is actually kind of nice. Sometimes they glob that a little bit, but this seems fine. This is nice. Um, a little thicker than I... It's fine. Um, it, it's always a toss-up between how thick you want it, right? The thicker it is, the bouncier it is when you roll dice on it, and, you know, the, maybe the more premium it feels, but it gets a little heavy sometimes, too. Um, so I'm fine with this thickness, or actually even a little bit less. I'm, I'm typically okay with I don't want anything too thick. Sometimes it's too much. And no weird smell. Rising Suns had, like, a fish smell to it, which is kind of odd. But, no, this looks good. Looks good. I like it. The colorations, especially, like, how these pop out right there. Awesome. Love it. All right, now I'm just going to abuse it and throw it on the ground. Sorry. Okay. Ugh, let's get to the actual, actual game here. Now, just note, of course, that I'm getting it this way, but I cannot say how you guys will get it. Um, even if I got it from the mass production line, like same as every other backer, I still couldn't because they use different manufacturers or different distributions for different people, unless they like packages it, uh, at the factory, which isn't too often. Um, so, you know, I, me in North America, you know, it'll be, you know, fun again, or it'll be, you know, what, wh whatever it might be, um, doesn't matter. The, the point is that 
Uh, they'll, they'll package things differently too. Come on, get in, get, get through. Get, 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 get. There we go. All right. But uh, just keep that in mind. So sometimes I get things worse. Sometimes it might be a little bit better. Just depends, just depends. This seems competently packaged, so I like that. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but it's all like actually branded Mythic Games, which is kind of cool. Um, it's kind of nice to say, uh, you know, these games cost a lot of money and it's nice to feel, like the unboxing experience should be nice. It's your first interaction with the game. So uh, they spent countless hours making this game, Steam Watchers. And you want the first impression to be like, oh my gosh, this is an amazing product. And then your second impression is the rule book, and then you actually play the game, right? But the game's the last part that you experience of a game. Your first is just looking at it, opening it up, seeing the art and all that. So you want there to be a good experience. So um, if you're a game creator, if you're listening to this, don't don't skip out on that part. It's First impressions are everything. And if people are upset because of damaged product, or if people are upset because it's it, it doesn't seem well protected or anything like like you you wanted to present it nice like even this which is kind of interesting but um this is faced the other way where these two are faced this way minor thing but it would have been nice like that i'm a little weird maybe i noticed things but um okay so box wise interesting so i know people talk about size boxes this is <laughs> never had a box this shape before so uh very tall just as tall as the core game all right, so slot it this way. It'll be just as tall, um, but obviously not as wide. That's kind of interesting. So we got Fuel for War. We'll look at all this top down, of course, in a bit. This one's much heavier. This is Spark of Hope. This is much heavier. Probably more cards. Normally, heaviness doesn't come from minis or anything like that. It's just, just cardstock, just paper. Man, paper is paper weighs a lot, especially when you get a whole bunch of it. Okay, and then we got the core game here. Oh my gosh, all right, come on. All right, let's get this. Oh, all right. Whew. Get this box out of the way. What do you guys say? And there we go. All right. Whoa, core box. Um, yeah, no, it looks nice. Um, it's, I guess, it's fairly retail. It's, it is nice, kind of a big cover there. Big honking name uh, shown right here. Uh, works good. I was worried because it's white with the snow and everything, but they put it in front of enough darkness to where it looks good. And then, of course, the name and then some big uh, numbers here to kind of show, which is, and of course, their logo. Then on the back, again, let's see what we got here. We got, again, same information here, a little bit of a blurb, right? Just kind of like about the game a little bit. Um, very high level description of the gameplay. Got some cards, got the map, got some renders of the minis, and then some cards here, and that's really it. So not, not too much there. Whew. Okay, so I'm just gonna open up the top lid. We're gonna see what we're gonna see, and then I'll swap to the top town view, top down view, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, I will show. I'm gonna open up, but then I'm gonna close it back because I want to show you something on the back that uh, I would like to like to show you guys in a in a, a way that's not like like this. I do this so you guys know I'm not just floating hands and you can see my pretty face. That's a lie too. <laughs> Seriously though, I don't like just being talking hands, so hope you're all right with that. Maybe you guys get to know me a little bit more. I don't know. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, very, very textured linen finish on the whole box. So you kind of hear that right away and it's every, every piece there has that nice scratches put in there. Look, look what I do for you guys. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> okay, all right, let's just go into the top down now because I do want to show you uh, this right here. So let's go over there. All right, so here I am. And the only thing I wanted to show you in this top down view, the reason I have it upside down here is just because there's a little bit of kind of some box damage here where the bottom has actually kind of been pushed in from the edge. And it's almost all the way around. You can even see it down here and then down in this corner here. And I don't think I've gotten a box from them like this before. So I just wanted to point that out. It could be anything. I also, again, I'm not getting this probably the same way you guys are, but wanted to point that out that I did notice that kind of the whole backside's almost pushed in a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't affect anything inside. I doubt it. It's pretty minor, but I know 
Um, you guys wouldn't expect anything else from me, um, but to notice that and comment. So let's go and take a look. All right, and might I say the glowy red string, super cool. All right, let's open it up. All right, okay, flip it over, take a look at the glue. So I can see right now there's a little bit of discoloration. I know a lot of people have been getting mold. That's certainly not mold, uh, not any mold that I've ever seen anyway. <laughs> a lot of people have been getting that though. My, uh, not, not from Mythic Games, but just from other Kickstarters and my condolences for that. A um, little bit of, uh, you know, not quite pushed down glue there. Um, nice straight line, which is nice. I enjoy seeing that. Um, a little bit here. And again, the reason I kind of look at this a lot of times is just because when you're lifting stuff out and in, mostly on the this bottom box here actually, but um, those little lips can catch and snag on stuff sometimes. Um, but yeah, it looks good. I will say there is some separation here already, um, but it lifted very nicely, which is good. If it didn't, I'd worry that the struggle of pulling it and lifting it would further it make that an issue, but I don't think so. Okay, another issue here. Again, I'm sorry, I can't make this up, but as you can see, the rules got wedged in between there, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, a tiny little bit, as you can see, this can move around fairly freely. It looks like there was supposed to be some spacers here, but not nearly enough. There needed to be something else, so this didn't just pulverize over that like it did. It looks like it just kind of moved right over and squished everything. So uh, a better spacer would have been, I think, even like, like this almost would have been better, and maybe a little bit thicker, um, or just even a little empty box. Probably could have gone a long way on that. So just gonna look out on that. Um, okay, so flip it over, look for an index. This is the rules. Okay, so we got a nice little player aid on the back, so you kind of put it on the table and kind of help with that. And then inside is an index. So really happy to see that, of course. That's very nice. And as you can see, it lists multiple pages in alphabetical order and doesn't look to actually just match just the uh, headers. So it's a good index. Really happy to see that. Very nice. And also, only 22 pages. That's not bad at all, which is nice. Now, I will say I don't like the size of this. Again, the, the problem is like when I'm looking this up and I have the game set up and I'm on the table and I'm using this as an index, first of all, the player aid is now taking up this much space, which as you can see with the picture here and the picture here, the player aid could have been a little bit smaller even just just with that. But on top of that, when I'm looking it up on a rule, on a rule it's kind of big, right? And unwieldy right there at the table where it's flopping down because I can't, I, my hands can't support the whole thing. Right, maybe I'm flipping it backwards a little bit or something like that to try and, you know, help a little bit. But then I can't flip it very easily. So maybe I'm trying to sit on the table. I need this much table space to look at it. I'm just talking from a practicality standpoint. Um, if nothing else, it makes it kind of hard to read while on the toilet. Um, and I, th I think that's also very important. Looking at it in a more serious way, <laughs> um, it looks pretty darn good. It looks actually fairly compact. It's got call out boxes. They're using different colors for different headers and stuff, italicized examples, um, which is also kind of nice. So I like that. It looks like it's showing all the different stuff. A game sequence, so kind of starting out on page eight with kind of like this high level. Here's how a game kind of plays. It looks like we got a, a setup thing here, uh, which is very nice. I am kind of struggling to turn the, turn the pages. It's hard to grip just one page, and I don't know if that's the way it's bound or... Is there some other issue there? Maybe I just struggle with things. That can happen. Overall, though, it looks like when it comes from as a like a learning tool, it looks fairly good. Also, I'd need to wait for a review to tell you that for sure. I can't flip those sides. But uh, yeah, definitely kind of nice. It's nice to kind of see everything and that little uh, coloration changes, which is also kind of nice. Rounds, offensive, rounds off four rounds, five rounds. Interesting, interesting. Okay, a uh, few uh, combat examples there, which is nice. Seems like a competent rule book. I just wish it was a different form factor. Um, I very much would appreciate it more like this. Actually, this would have been almost perfect. Maybe it's slightly too tall, but and then flip it like that. I feel like that takes up a lot less than having to do this. It seems a bit long to me, but I mean, if you think about it, a rule book isn't too much different from this, so. 
Um, but I, I can then hold it, right? Because my thumb almost extends to the end, so when I turn it, I can kind of support it in my hands. This one, this is a, a floppy, flaccid mess. <laughs> okay, next. Steam Watchers the Ice Logs. That looks cool. This has some cool stuff in that. Look at all this. The Ice Logs making of. Very cool to see all this. I dig it. I dig it. A little kind of a... Uh, it's, it's just kind of a nice little art lore book, which is nice. I appreciate that. It's just really cool if you really get into it or um, since you're kind of like reading through stuff. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. I always uh, like it when they include stuff like this. Shows their uh, thought process is a lot deeper than just making things look cool, right? So there's a double layer player boards here. But I really appreciate that um, when they put a little bit more thought into things, right? I think that's really nice. All right, let's go and do that. Open this up. Come on. Come on. There we are. Come on, get off me. <laughs> get off me. All right, there we are. I think. Yeah, yeah, there we are. Got it. <laughs> All right, these are also kind of long. Maybe it's just kind of a long, skinny game. I don't know. It's like very long here. Um, the dual layer is really good, though. Um, like, it's very deep, very nice. Uh, like, that is put in there. But it looks like the art, if you see it, actually lines up. A lot of times the art will mess up, right? Uh, d just because of the, the depth difference. But those line up, like, great actually so that's see see the line there and how it just kind of goes in very nicely done and then these eight and six are not so you're not putting anything on there uh yeah very very nice and then these are little inlays here and i don't know exactly why they're like that but i do appreciate it because on the back it tells you kind of everything you get here times three times three times 13 times one all your different tokens and whatnot very nice to see even your starting stuff here so you start by having it here and then you'll flip it over and then play the game which is quite cool i dig that and it looks like they even have their uh, abilities put right here which again is also kind of nice okay let's go ahead and take two of these flip them over what this will do is show any kind of bending as you can see there's a tiny bit of bend but not a whole lot and actually that might not even be bend i think that's really just a roundedness on the front um, so a lot of times you can tell a token from the front and the back because the front will be bent in a little bit. See how that's kind of, see the little shine right there? This is bent in. And then on the back, it's nice and straight. See, there's that, there's not that shine there. So it's just from how it's cut, I think, is actually the process that does that to these. But that's all that was. So they're not bent, which is nice. If they were curved, then flipping the curve with that curve it creates a little bit of a bubble. You can tell if stuff's bent. Um, so there is that as you can see on the table there is like some cardboard residue stuff it's not sealed or anything like that and you can very much see the two different layers and you can i mean it feels like raw cardboard on the sides um and then there is actually a fairly hefty tag at least oh no it's really just this one that's like that um the rest seem pretty good uh and then kind of a matte look you can see it doesn't shine too much which i very much appreciate so you can kind of still read things if it's too shiny that's bad too and it has a linen finish as well um so overall i'm pretty happy with them i think if there was any room for improvement it'd be this kind of raw side there just making it less less dusty maybe a little bit more clean um in the feel of it it feels you can feel the raw material there uh but very heavy too. I mean, these are these are thick. Obviously compressed and all that, but there's not really a lot of push. I can't really squeeze it too much, which is nice. I don't see any clear fraying or anything on any of them. So yeah, these these look good. Let's take a quick look at all of them. There's a lot of this kind of stuff that's gonna make me not say the names out loud. So uh, there's Romstein. I guess the rock group is now no, it's not Romstein. Free Fleet. See, I can say Free Fleet. It's not three times fast. That's, uh, whatever. Highland, high limmer apostles, high high glimmer, high glimmer. Oh, they're glamorous. I love how yellow they are. That'd be freaking sweet to paint. <laughs> and the Western Alliance. Western Alliance, I can say. <laughs> All right, put those to the side here. Oh, I got a ton here. Okay. 
No, and what is it? Stickers? I don't know what's going on there. So it is kind of wrapped on its own. It's fairly tight. I can sometimes force a bend over time if it's just a little too tight, but I think this is good. It seems good to me, so let's take a look. There we are. What's nice about keeping them wrapped like this is there's a much less chance of uh, missing one. So a lot of times they'll wrap this so that it's easier to put in the box, it's easier to keep them grouped, and all that kind of stuff like at the in the factory, right? It just makes it all a lot more, a lot, it makes it just one piece as opposed to five, right? So the logistics just make it easier. I think the sticker stayed in there, yeah. Don't throw away your stickers. I'm not sure what those are for. Hopefully they're just there to fix something would be my assumption. But what it is, I don't know, because like there's a sticker for that. I don't know. Well, I'll find out. Let's go ahead and punch some stuff out. Bloop. Bloop. Looks like some turn turny thingies. Take that out. Take that out. I'm going to put one together once we get to that point, but as you can see, this is looks like it's going to be great. Nice and nice and big there, which is nice. That plenty thick so you can grip it. And the numbers are kind of at an angle, which is kind of weird. So it's like you want it to be like this as opposed to like this, right? So it's kind of straight up to you. But it's kind of weird that they're at kind of a an angle. I would not have anticipated that. Uh, Alglofuel. Yoglofuel. I can't quite read that. I think it's go, go fuel. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is. Those punched out great, by the way. So this has a little bit of a tag, as you can see. But nothing's, uh, looks like they're all pretty strong. Even when I push it on that side, it still stays there. Very strong tags on this left side, where every single one, <laughs> it's just like, I'm not coming off. Gotta, gotta like, <laughs> grab the dangly bits and, and just go for broke there. Uh, they are, uh, double sided, but not the same symbol. So if you need them all facing one side, you're gonna have to, Flip each one over. It looks like it's uh, kind of a random boost that you might get. Uh, let's look and open some of these bigger ones here. Uh, they also have a hard one on that side. Very interesting. I've, I don't know if I've ever had one from Mythic that, that's quite done that. I'm going to try and see if I can't get one just to punch all the way through. Let's see if I just do it fast. Maybe if I do... Hmm. I bet you're going to have to do it like this. Yep. And if you do like that, it pops all the way out. Otherwise, they are pretty strong on there. It's kind of interesting. Interesting. Um, actually, feeling it though, the tag is you know normal to be honest. Like it, it, it doesn't stand out. It's not non-existent, but it's certainly not bad either. But yeah, so far the tokens look pretty good. There is a little bit of sponginess, perhaps. Feeling a little give when I squeeze. So it's not the most compressed. So we'll see how the tokens fare from prolonged play. Is there anything different on these? Oh, calm down. <laughs> these other ones. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, here's something different. Pop this bad boy out. Oh, oh see, those ones came out right away. There you go. <laughs> Love the, oh, this looks freaking cool is what that looks like. And then we got some uh, stuff here too. Again, I don't know what any of this is. <laughs> But it looks cool. And then the uh, map is all one piece. Okay, so it does look like that. Um, I'll maybe do this at the end just because it'll take up some space. Well, you've seen the map at least. But it looks like there's something on the back that looks kind of cool too. So I'll take a look at that as well. Uh, but I'll do that when I have more space here. Right now I'm kind of in the middle of stuff, <laughs> as you can see. So let's go ahead and just move that here. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and just dump that in there. All right. Now, it looks a lot like uh, Mythic Battle, or uh, not Mythic Battles, uh, Super Fantasy Brawl, and the fact that there's a lot of like extra space in here, right? 
Um, however, it looks like they're easier to grab than the ones there, which is also kind of nice because I don't know anybody who actually ended up enjoying that. You, they like they would catch on each other and everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at let's take a look at purple first. Let's go ahead and do that. It looks like it's just a whole bunch. In fact, let me let me take a few out to see. These are quite light, by the way, which I'm totally fine with. It looks like that's all there is. It's just a whole bunch of them. <laughs> so lots and lots of them here. So I'm assuming tokens, and it looks like the spinner will go here. And it looks like there's plenty of room for tokens on the sides here is where they'll go. These are locking, which is kind of nice. You can see the little divot there where they pump in there, which is also very nice. Just kind of lock on there a little bit. And all that does is it helps keep it on. It's not like going to be perfect or anything, but as you can see, it, it, it kind of stays on there a little bit. And you can know when it's actually closed. You can feel that a little bit too. Just a little, little nib there. Uh, this does not show game trays. And you know what? I like it better. I will admit. Uh, they're, they're fairly skinny, but that's fine. They don't need to be... I don't think they're... They're not crinkly, really. They're black, which is nice. Like I said, they fit in a lot nicer with than those big clasps that the game trays have. I would take this over the game trays in Super Fantasy Brawl any day. No, it's name brand, but I'm not sure the name brand's actually the best there there might be there. Because I, I don't know who made these, but I uh, wish I knew. Maybe just the manufacturer did. Either way, good job, manufacturer. Did good. Oh my gosh, I can't open this. <laughs> uh, everything is in resealable baggies here, which is kind of nice. If you want to keep them that way, or you could probably keep them loose. I'll check both out. This is some interesting stuff here. So we got like this really nice... This looks great, by the way. A little bit right there where it filled in, but otherwise, that looks so, like that looks good. That looks cool. I like it. And we got this a little bit here, and then this little bit here. And again, a little bit right there, but otherwise, and I mean that's always the case. There's always a poor spot there. It looks like there's some arrows here on the side. Very cool looking. Put that right there. Put that right there. There we go. <laughs> All right, so, ooh, let's look at some of these things. These are cool. Looks like we got what, three of these. And again, I would probably actually just end up keeping them like this. Let me actually do that right now. I'm gonna dump them all. We'll put the lid on and see kind of how it how it lasts. I'll look at them first. Well, no, I'll do the lid first just because I'll be zooming in to look at these. So we'll put them in here. Tell you right now though, they look they look like they're great quality. All right, we'll even put those in there. You know what? We're going to put a spin dial in there, and let's put some tokens in there for funsies. Let me see about that. So here's some bigger ones that don't go there. Interesting. They might go underneath. That's fine. We'll put some tokens right in there. Okay. Put that sucker on, no bags, because you're a monster. And then you store it on the side, you store it up. Maybe you can put it upside down. There's nothing, there's no fingers hold it in place. It looks like there is a little bit of potential for some of those to come out. But otherwise, none of the minis, just because they're so thick. So, there you go. And that looks like it, uh, no, it's just, just not quite flat. Why is it? Oh, it's because this is in here now. <laughs> now, would it do that if there was, you know, uh, stuff on top? Well, maybe not. But either way, that held up pretty good, I felt. That was not too bad. So feel free if you want, especially if you're not going to paint them. Though, again, even with some paint and some varnish, I bet they'd be okay. I really do. Um, there is a little bit of an inlay here. I'm not sure why. But either way, that's kind of how that looks like. It'll, looks like it'll hold pretty okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Just a little bit of movement there. And again, if this were packed full, then maybe not. So, this all depends. All right, let's go and take a look at some of these minis. I'm going to zoom in here. All right, and we will take a look. So let's start with these guys here. All right, now these are smaller scale, as you can see. Um, which is because I think you have so many of them. There is a little bit of a mold line on the base itself, as you can see. Um, Detail-wise, he's got eyes. He's got a little mask with the little grills there. Um, a little faint detail, not too bad. A little bit of a mold line there. His hair, 
It's actually kind of spiked. I think for the most part, they designed this with the scale in mind, which is always nice to see. Um, spikes here look good. The armor actually looks fairly crisp here, as you can see also. Um, this little canister looks nice. He actually has sculpted fingers, which is good to see as well. These are very small details, so it's it's always important to kind of notice that when you do. Okay, a little bit of a, a hole right there, for whatever reason. Let me zoom in maybe a little bit more. All right, so now you can kind of see that hole there. Um, that he also has, but otherwise, fur cloak looks good also. Yeah, it's a certainly capable mini, and again, this is actually connected to his head, which is smart use there, and it's fairly thick, but not too bad. That being said, very plain right here. There's no real detail at all there. And you get like a buttload of them. 13, I think it's there, right? <laughs> Next up, we have these little turret guys. Very cool. Reminds me a lot of the uh, Zombicide Invader one, um, though designed a little bit, a little bit more uh, of a of a cartoony style. Perhaps I guess that's the best word for it. And I think a lot of it just is again because of the scale. It is multi-piece. This piece up here is different than this piece, but it was assembled quite well. Um, I like the nice big old Phillips screw. Looks like it almost unscrewed with this. <laughs> uh, some more canisters. Very plain side here it's very flat very plain there on both sides uh, a little bit of detail on the top here which is nice to see it's really nice what you're going to see and then great detail here actually this looks really nice it's like a power core or something like that very nice and then scale wise you can kind of see how it's about the size of like a person really so pretty big in this world anyway then there are these bad boys, which I think this actually looks even better. Again, multi-piece. This piece here is separate, but it was actually assembled quite well. Pretty happy with that, especially from the top. Um, the clasps here look good. Lots of detail on there, which is great to see. All the lines and stuff like that. Even the inner workings here. A little bit of flash right there, as you can see inside. It looks like this one's better. Looks like just that one got a little bit more flash. Um, and then flash down here as well from the mold line and then the pore spout at the bottom. Great place for it. Glad they put it there. Glad they were able to do that. Hoses and wires look kind of cool. Um, it's a little kind of stargating here where it kind of just blends into there where normally I think there'd be a hole there. So this is filled in and then of course this is also filled in. Um, but it's not overly distracting or anything and for the most part it looks fine. Um, but that is definitely filled in. All right, and that's them. That's that's the three there. Let's keep it up. Let's keep going. What else we got? Got the green, or like a, a very light green. Here's the green people, and uh, I love their helmets, I can tell you that right now. And I don't know what this is, it's like a little baton thing, but they got a little gun. I actually really dig the gun, looks good. Yeah, actually the details here are quite crisp. Again, I'm very surprised to see the fingers there, that looks really good. Um, I think the difference sculpted with that in mind. And this almost looks like it's too far down. It's not, it's actually perfect, it's right there like on the ground. The hose is good, there's actually some good detail there. I appreciate seeing. I think that's very nice as well. Shoulder pad looks nice and crisp. These little like hose ends look good. I know it's really bright perhaps on the screen, but yeah, they look really cool. And then they have these, but again, it's the same thing here, so I'm not too focused on that. But look at these guys. Look at that. That is like pretty hardcore actually. I dig that. So these look, this looks great. They did a good job here with all of this. Uh, the kind of the 
smoke effect and then the flame effect that goes into the smoke effect. Very well done. Um, the wings on the inside look pretty darn cool. On the outside, they're fairly plain. That's all right. Um, guns look cool. I dig that. Again, the ends are a little plain as well. But you can also only expect so much at this scale. Um, like the, uh, the, the, the body here, how... Like, he's kind of stepping down and starting to even encompass his foot there, which is nice to see also. And then there's the little odds and ends on the on the like, helmet look nice too. Very hard to see in the in the face. I do see a nose and some eyes. And I imagine once you put some primer on them and didn't make them so freaking brightly painted, I think that would help a lot. Um, I, I don't know. I'll be interested to see how much the color change actually matters here. Like, how different do these guys look than that? When you have shared ones like this, I can understand the color difference, but otherwise, for the most part, I've noticed anyway, I'm able to tell the difference from a lot of these. Right. Let's go dark green. guys are cool I dig them a lot look at this guy here is that not just awesome <laughs> love it love the kind of fur around his armor love the fur around his hood the big old beard that he's got the big old gun he's got a big gun I like that his fingers look good the pose is actually quite nice as he's moving the cape actually looks really good um really dig it again a little cartoony style but I actually quite like them they seem pretty neat uh, even the end of the gun is actually kind of nice. It's got a little bit of texture there and a little bit of, you know, uh, pointing out part there, which is quite nice to see. A little bit more detail there. And again, the fingers holding the gun. Very surprised by that. There's a little bit of a fill-in right here. But again, that's underneath. On the top, you don't really get to see that, which is quite nice. I'm glad they did that. Um, yeah, overall pretty good. A little bit of blending in of the cloak to the... Uh, as you can see, there's just not really a hard edge there, so you'll have to kind of paint that in if you paint it. Um, it there's an edge there, but it's very faint. Very faint. Anyway, they look cool. And they get freaking tanks, because heck yeah. So, as you can see, they have these tanks here, and I don't know if this moves or not. It seems like they move, because, like, look at this one. This one's even, like, looks like it's supposed to be turned. Oh, I guess it's supposed to be that way. Okay. Well, that's good to know, then. So it's definitely supposed to be turned, though. It looks like it may have needed to be pushed in a bit more. I don't know. Maybe because on this side, you can... Oh, I guess it's all right. You can see it. It's okay. Um, so treads look cool. Um, love the kind of the, the fur thing still going on here. The tusks look neat. They're very big. Uh, this is quite plain, right? It'd be nice to see maybe a little hatch or something. I don't know how they're getting into this vehicle. And not even through the back. I love the engines, though. Those look cool. Um gnarly mold line here though sadly like all the way around like the worst mold line i've seen so far in this game like you can you can definitely see that and then actually all along here too um so definitely i don't think one of their best minis when it comes to the mold line here especially that being said this one looks better this one looks worse when it comes to that so it looks like it's kind of just depends i think this is actually probably the worst one but between that and maybe a little bit of the the, see even like the flash here as well. There's just a lot of flash on this. And then again, I think it's plainer than it needed to be. They could have, I think, easily put a hatch here or something. Something. And maybe even here or some kind of ridge or, I don't know, just something to change it up a little bit. It's very flat on the top. Like it looks like a basic like Tron, like the original Tron, you know, with the basic geometric shapes. It looks like a tank from there maybe with a whole bunch of stuff strapped on the sides. <laughs> but hey, you get freaking tanks. So there's that. All right, here are the blue ones. Take them out. Now, I have already opened them out of the bags just so I wasn't wasting time on film doing it, but that's all I've done. I haven't even picked them up, so excited to look at these. Let's see. Okay, yeah, we got some, some fur-lined cloak here, which is very nice. A sniper gun, which I appreciate seeing that. I wonder if that's represented in-game. Well, and again, it might just be a rifle, not necessarily a sniper gun, but it does have the scope, at least. 
And the end of the gun is actually kind of detailed too, which I appreciate. Again, at this scale, I think that's quite good. A little bit of even like stitching on the cloak, which is cool to see. And a big old backpack. So they're definitely like alone and out in the wilderness kind of thing. Full visor helmet, which is also pretty darn neat. They have these little Jeeps, which I actually really like the wheels on and stuff. Um, so uh, no door handles, I've noticed, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, it would have been nice to see some door handles there, I think. I feel it would have been cool. I think they could have done it too. Uh, headlights, again, that actually looks quite nice with the little kind of bumper grail thing and a nice little gun on top. Looks pretty good. I don't see any issues with flash or anything like that. Um, and again, poor spot on the bottom, but who the heck cares? It's on the bottom. So I quite dig that, actually. That looks pretty darn good. A cool guy, you know? Now, the one thing I will say is the scale is wrong. Right, so it's not to scale. That guy is not fitting in that car. There's nothing you can do about it. I don't care how many pieces you cut him into. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> Maybe you leave his gun out and all of his, his backpack. I don't know. Maybe we can find a way. Put the head in the truck. Okay, that's got weird. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, not to scale, obviously. All right. Now let's go ahead and do yellow here. Hopefully this shows up pretty okay. Yellow is very hard to film because it's very bright. Um, so right now, one thing I will say is they filled this, which is really unfortunate. It's a very cool pose, but they filled this completely, which is just a bummer. Huge bummer on that. Even on this too, and I think it's supposed to be the cloak, but it like doesn't even really look like the cloak, <laughs> if that makes sense. It's so just, uh, that's un I'm real bummed about that. I wish that would have been separated really do because otherwise that's cool but that's so distracting it's like i don't know i don't know i would paint it like the cloak if i was going to paint it there's also a little bit of a pore spout here on top of the cloak which again is unfortunate the gun i think or the sword looks great the big old sword handle and then the um the like little kind of tassel at the end of there that looks awesome let's say she's got some kind of like uh jaffy stick from a tuscan raider in her hand or something like that and it looks like half cloaked here which is also super cool i really dig that as well and the visor is super neat too but oh my gosh that is iridescent on camera i'm sure i apologize for that i got a uh, very interesting tank so there's kind of like a tank jeep mix right half tank half jeep uh gun on top of just two of them but not as big as the tank but then whatever the heck this junk is i don't even know you know what this looks like it's almost like the jeep tank thing that uh bulma uses in dragon ball gt to turn vegeta into super saiyan <laughs> The, like, artificial moon thing. Um, maybe I'm remembering that wrong. I know it's been a long time since I've seen that, but um, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Uh, crazy design, though, that's for sure. I, I, I dig it. I dig it. And again, painted up. I bet that was super cool, too. All right, next up we got brown. This one looks kind of interesting because it looks like there's three meat sculpts instead of just two. So here is the person here. Uh, again, love the mask. I think that's super cool. Really dig the mask. Love the holding of the like clasps there. They're very well detailed. The fingers. Look at the fingers at this small scale. That's great. That's great that there's actually like a hand there. And it's not like a mitten hand or anything even. Uh, in between here, see this was separated. Why was this separated but the yellow wasn't? This looks so much better. So much better like this. I'm so sad about that yellow one. That looks great. I really like that. See in the back, they got the kind of like techno bow thing. Fairly plain in texture though, sadly. I wish there was a little bit more texture there. Because like there's like all this texture like on his cape. It's all sewn together and stuff like that. And then on the chest, there's all this detail. And then that's just plain. That's fine. Maybe I'll paint. I, I, I don't, I'll have to look at the art, I guess. And then see if I even paint these, but um, if I would, I would paint it maybe some kind of incandescent color or something like that, like it's energy or something, and that's why it's like that. All right, so we got these like crazy weird outposts that are being overgrown by whatever. As you can see, there's like the kind of, uh, you know, dome like this, which is super cool looking, by the way, and then they have the little 
you know, silos here and then bigger like uh, exhaust things here. And look how that's open. Very nice to see. And then how oh, this is wrapping and all that, but it's so separate. See how it's separate? I thought that was very nice. A great touch. This is actually quite quality. Again, kind of that like cartoony plain style and you know, plain blocks and all that, but I think it works. Now, opposite of that, we get we get this guy or thing, whatever it is. Um, it looks like General Grievous <laughs> with a uh, with a cape. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's like a weird tripod thing. I guess no, it's okay. It's got its two legs. And then it's got its hand down there. It's just got its hand like on the on the ground, which is actually very cool, I think. And then kind of the blade weapon here, which actually looks super cool. And again, same kind of sewn together um, cloak, which I think helps it fit in with the rest of it. So even once it's painted, it looks quite similar like that. Very cool. Even the underside's fairly well detailed. Actually pretty impressed with this one. Looks cool. There might be a little bit of like fuzziness in the detail here. I'd have to really see after priming. Some of these are kind of hard to tell color wise, but sculpt wise, I think this looks cool. I like them. All right, next we have like peach color. I guess one thing I will notice here is there is a little bit of a break here. So that did happen. Here we have these people. And uh, again, these are kind of like the Hellgast kind of, uh, you know, full face mask with the tube going to the like breather unit kind of thing going on here with a quite unique, make sure that's zoomed in well, a quite unique gun. I really like it. It's got the blade on the top. It's got a big old long extended magazine and kind of a laser gun askew kind of, uh, you know, muzzle here almost. Uh, with like a lot of air just dis you know dissipation all that the uh, blade is actually fairly skinny if you notice it's and it's not super bendy or anything like that so really nice to see that uh, spikes on the armor really make it kind of stand out from the typical kind of World War II style kind of thing and again they filled the legs up which is really I, I don't like seeing that I really don't very unfortunate as you can see it's not even like really trying to blend in anymore the cape ends here and then it's just filled in inside, and that's so unfortunate. I'm really bummed to see that, especially when some of them don't have that. This is perhaps the coolest vehicle. I think this unit, this, these guys here, may look as more different than all the rest. Love the big old tire. Really dig the kind of like snow ski things that are going there. Um, great detail all around also. This is probably one of the best minis, to be honest. Like everything seems pretty crisp. There's a little bit of a flash here move line here to remove but i mean really this this looks nice this is not bad at all this might be the best mini out of the bunch that i've seen so far looking good i like it i really do i like that one all right next oh looks like we got some just odds and ends and stuff we got some of these which are just like I, I'm, I'm not sure not sure what this is got a whole bunch of them though so there's that i don't know did, did they go into each other like that is it something you build up look at that look at that <laughs> i don't know i don't know what this is kind of cool though we got some green and red of these two i'm assuming those are using the player boards um we also got these things here which are like crazy looking like look at that Again, it's like built into like rock, which is cool to see. Um, huge turret, lots of like kind of steam engine askew kind of stuff here, which I like. Love the dual guns, uh, vertical versus horizontal. Um, kind of like a, a Death Star trench run kind of turret looking thing here. Love the bolts on here and stuff like that. Again, it gives me a little bit of a World War II kind of thing. We get a whole bunch of those. And then we have this for the spinner. I'll try that at the very end. Last one of the main box. Oh, also, they put like, cardboard on the bottom parts, which is nice. Keeps them a bit more secure. Next up, we got this one on the very bottom here. Now, I did notice also, again, that there's a little bit of a 
kind of bendiness there, but nothing too bad. Okay. And again, we got some of these, but if you notice now, it's like bubble on top, which is kind of interesting. And I don't know if this is supposed to be steam. I'm not quite sure. I'll have to read the rules, obviously. There's a little bit of a line there, but it's pretty faint. I think they look kind of cool. And then we also have some of these, but if you notice, it's the same thing, but they're not corrupted, right? They don't have that kind of stuff all around it. So very cool to see both there and kind of see what the difference is there. I'm excited for that. And then we also got some cards, the nice deep uh, lift part here. It goes almost to the bottom, not quite, but it's like two cards off, easy enough to get. I was able to grab it all there. I very much appreciate that. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different cards of various whatevers. I'll find it all out, I'm sure. But look at these here. Oh, okay, it looks like on the back is all Steam Watchers. On here is kind of what you're looking at. It's just, I guess, a, a, a certain zone that's uh, in the red each time something's happening there is, you know, whatever that might be, which is kind of interesting. Okay, we also have some player aids. Looks like one for each person, which is kind of nice. That's kind of cool. I imagine there's some differences between them, I would think. Maybe, do I see any differences? Or is it just a different color? Yeah, okay, looks like it's all the same. So they're all the same, just matches your color. Uh, some scenario cards, looks like just two of them here. So regular Miracle Algae, Ruins looks like three, are these more scenarios? I don't know. Oh, Scenario Secrets, Staging Post, Coasting, Tech What You Need. I uh, like the art, I actually really like the art, that looks cool. Very stylized, um, with a fair amount of lighting involved here to make it kind of different. Uh, so it's not all the same kind of snow, right? Different deployments, and I think that's it. So pretty card light, to be honest. Okay, that's everything in the core box. So let's look at that map and then look at the three expansions. All right, next up we're gonna look at all the expansions here. I'm gonna read the backs of them. All I've done is take the wrapper off here. So the Spark of Hope expansion provides a caravan to each clan in each of its three trucks that can host a powerful and upgradable tech kit. These Kits let you generate algo fuel, carry troops and, and buildings, or draw more cards. Complete for, compete for the tech kits if you want to use Caravan to secure victory. So that seems kind of cool. It's almost like a um, a uh, alternative play style, if that makes sense. Kind of like the um, um, Blood Rage expansion, sort of, right? We get those gods on the table. It's like, well, you can't play with them, or Rising Sun, same kind of thing. But you don't have to. So a little bit of the rules on how to play it, some additional setup on it. Looks like each people get their own colors, which is kind of cool. Some new actions, and then some notes and stuff like that, which I imagine are actually kind of helpful. That's nice to see as well. Mobile bases expansions and some special rules. So uh, actually quite a bit of rule changes here. Definitely a different uh, way to view it. I um, don't know if I'm going to actually open this up. I guess I will. It looks like it's kind of unique. May as well, right? If we're going to go all in, we may as well look at it all. Come on. That being said, I was actually surprised. I don't know, when I first saw this game, I thought it looked really busy. I think it was just because of the amount of units, perhaps. Um, but it's actually not that many component-wise. Like, there's not a whole lot of cards or anything like that. It's just you know, I have your three units and uh, you doing stuff, which is kind of interesting. I dig that. Okay, so we got some of these. They punch out beautifully. Actually, I was very happy with that. Heavy Carrier Starting Kit, Passive, this kit can hold up to three base soldiers. It's going to hold up to five units and two buildings, so you have an advanced Heavy Carrier. So it looks like there's a Heavy Carrier, can hold up to three base soldiers, and then the Heavy Carrier. So it looks like you can upgrade to several Heavy ca ca Carriers, Biomass Generators, um, let's see, what do we got here? Heavy Carriers, and then Biomass Generators. So that's all of those. Put that back in there. Hydraulic support tripods, amphibious modules, sensory arrays, recycling stations. Anything different here? No. Except just some advanced versions of them. This is kind of a fun one. Look at this. Combat simulator magnetic cannons. Heck yeah. Let's get some of that in there. <laughs> 
Uh, the f no force march or seafaring movements, no need to be supplied. Plus three fists, wind defending. It looks like there's a little spot here. It's probably put something on there. And same thing here. So it uh, looks like there's at least one of those, maybe two in each one. It looks like it's probably just this way, I think. Yes. Okay, we got two more here with some EMP fields, because why not? And then two more here, some experimental greenhouses. Oh, look, we're gonna have some some trees. How nice. All right, get some cards here. I'm not gonna go and open these up, but it looks like just more of this kind of stuff. We Oh, I don't know, that looks different. Uh, no easy open here by the looks of it, which would have been welcome. Starting to get used to those, actually. I wish they happened more often, especially with little ones like this. It's very hard to open it and not damage the cards or anything like that underneath. It's kind of one thing you gotta be careful with. There we go. There we go. All right. I did it. Don't you guys worry about it. I'm a professional unboxer here. Some YouTubers box, I unbox. <laughs> All right. Again, really like the art, actually. Um, I'm really doing Blizzard. And then on the back, it just shows you they're kind of from this expansion, by the looks of it. Um, but look at all this empty space here. So t this is one of those things where to get to be the same size as everything, right? So they're all the same size here. You end up wasting a lot of room. It's got dented in, looks a little bit too. And I, I never do like that. Um, storage is always really hard, and I get a lot of people like it to be uniform, but I personally probably want it about as minified as possible. But what the heck? Is that? Ooh, a lot of these. Okay, so let's see what kinds are there. Let's get some colors that'll show up too. <laughs> so we got this, this, and this. Are these the three different kinds? Looks like it. See anything else? Oh yeah, there's an antenna one. These are the same one there. So let's get, get some different colors in there. Okay, I think it's these three. Okay. So, as you can see, you got one that has like, a little, oh gosh, do they actually fit in together? Oh, they do. Look at that. That's cute. It's like a little Christmas train. <laughs> All right, there you are. There, there you go. The, this one fits in, I think, actually pretty good. This one I'm not sold on. That works. That's fun. <laughs> Okay, so we got the front one, obviously, right? It's got the little snow plow and the little window where they could see through it and, and all these little treads. And they got the middle one that'll help defend the thing. Then you got the back one with kind of like the Caboose Research Center fuel tank kind of thing. Uh, I think they're cool. I like them. I'm surprised you get so many of them. I guess it, it, the color matters, right? <laughs> but that's really it for the expansion. So let's go and move on to the next one. That's a heavy one, just from all this cardboard. All right, next up we have Peace with Wolves. I don't suggest it. The Peace with Wolves expansion from Steam Watchers introduces two new modules. The Diplomacy module allows you to trade valuable resources and forge alliances. However, there can still only be one winner. This module is designed for three or more players. In the Vassal module, two to three players will find themselves supported by a Vassal clan that provides its forces for you to control. Interesting, interesting. Again, I actually really like the uh, gameplay differences. It's not just like, here's another, you know, unit that's just like all the rest. You know, each one kind of comes with its own uh, rule book and stuff like that. Looks so like you can forge alliances. Uh, that's not what I imagine this is here. So cool to see that. Looks like they are per clan there too. A lot more cards on this one. I'm not going to go and open that up, but that's cool to see. And then, and also, Notice this is not black; it's clear. Um, it, it's just the lid, but it's like a it's like a fancy lid, right? It's like it holds the stuff in there. It's not just a flat lid like all the rest. Still locking. Right, move that to the side, and then all we get are these. Kind of interesting. I was expecting maybe a a, a clay unit, you know, some kind. It said it lends your forces. Maybe that's here within this with like the militia and stuff like that. Maybe that's how that works. One more. Uh, yeah. Next up, 
Fuel for War. That's my style. The Fuel for War expansion introduces powerful military leaders to the world of Europa. These elite soldiers sit on the conclave, building their strength, and when they descend upon the battlefield, they fight to win. By any means necessary, equipped with deadly gear unique to each clan, your leaders gives you access to new tactical options and new ways to bring the fight to your enemies. I dig it. Let's find out more about it. Maybe. There we are. Okay, so actually kind of the lightest of the rules here, which is just being a play straight for it, so I kind of dig that. Great art. Love the art here. Look at that. Oh, they're got little kitties. <laughs> and then some more tokens, and of course it looks like a leader for each clan, which is super cool. Excited to see them, because they're kind of like busts, which is also kind of neat. Again, way more room than they need there. I'll probably keep the bag for that one. But let's go and get started. Zoom in a little bit. All right, love the, it's because it's larger, the detail level is a lot better and it looks really good too. Uh, the ends of the um, guns still don't have like the, like this is not their their best sculpts ever that I've seen from Mythic Games. I think Solomon Kane was clearly better. I think uh, Super Fantasy Brawl was better, but it was also a much larger scale. Um, but these are still really good. The and again, it's a little cartoony as well, but uh, really like the gun here. Uh, not really mold line here, which is unfortunate. Uh, so a lot more mold lines than I would like. Uh, cloak looks good. Fur looks good. Hood has some nice kind of ripples in it, and also just a, a very cool kind of stance holding the gun that way, and then kind of looking this way. And again, gun or the finger in the kind of right there near the trigger, I think is kind of nice too. I really dig that. All right, what else we got? Okay, this is basically the same pose. So again, holding gun this way, looking this way. <laughs> um, it is multi-piece, it's glued fairly well. There is a kind of a pore spout here from the channel of plastic that's a little bit more obvious than I would like, but at least it's on the back, so it's in a good spot. Fur turned out good. Um, the mold line doesn't really mess with the hair too much, which is kind of nice to see. Appreciate that. Gun looks good. It's got some like ribs there. It looks a little bent. It is a little bent. This almost needs to come out a little bit more. I might have to heat that up and kind of fix it a little bit. See how bent it is? Like that. <laughs> There's no gun bent like that, so I'll have to try and fix that. Um, it is kind of interesting to see that the quality of this is not as high as I would have expected from Mythic Games. I was, I mean, I was saying they were like top tier. And while this is good, it's not top tier. Um, again, I think Solomon Kane's far better. These look good. Love the, what is that coming out of there? That, oh, that's like the breezing unit thing. I really dig the, uh, the like goggles here. And those are interesting. Although I don't know, I, I guess they're coming out, like it gets really blurry there. I don't know if you see that or not. But it's like there's a mold line there, but then it's like, is this going on to the, the 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 cap or I don't know? Could you move this? Is this something they can move down or is it always? I don't know. Why would they even be there anyway with the visor? I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, it is very pink though. I don't know. Is this supposed to be attached or not? There's some like mold line there. I think it's supposed to be attached, but I want to cut that off. What is that there? I'm not sure. Fingers look good. Uh, the armor all looks good. Detail-wise, I think this is actually fairly, fairly good. It's a little weirdness there, um, and a little weirdness there, perhaps. Oh, it's like a hose, so I bet it's supposed to... I wonder if... Is that supposed to be a hose right there? I don't know. No, no not sure about that one. <laughs> this one is opposite. It's a gun going this way, face going this way, instead of going that way, face going that way. But I am seeing a theme there when it comes to design there. Love the gun though. Uh, that's a sweet freaking gun. Sweet hairstyle too with a shaved head. Love that. Um, then it kind of comes down there and it got like a full breezing mask and a power level over 9,000, the goggle thing going on there. Um, the assembly is actually pretty good. Look, they filled this in again, which is always kind of unfortunate to see. I would have liked to see the strap there or, I don't know, design in a way to where that wasn't. I just, I don't like the fill in. I can never get it to look good. You, you paint it black and hope it just looks like a hole, I guess, or you can paint the, like what, what do you paint it as? That's the problem. So um, I get it. You can't have the negative space there, but it is always unfortunate when that's there. Um, 
But the detail wise, other than that, I think this one's probably the best one as far as I can tell. Uh, the symbol here is kind of weird. It's a little kind of not put together all the way. There's a mold line there, but it's very faint. Assembly is pretty good here. I appreciate that. So besides that, I actually quite like this one. Ah, Techno. <laughs> Love the uh, the face to this one. Just full visor. It's going to be really hard to paint, but it's going to be cool. Uh, I also love the fingers out here. This might, actually might be my favorite one. Um, deep cloak in here. They didn't fill this up at all. This looks really nice. It goes down like that. Um, cool kind of armor pad there. Just kind of a little gun. And then these like wings. They remind me of like a, the Batman mini a little bit. But uh, I like how they're like, folded in like that. It looks like they could fan out. Uh, the head is tilted a little bit as well. Just overall very cool. Oh, and I love this. So, like how the cape is right over the arm like that. Just very cool. Um, yeah, no, my favorite one. I think that one's cool. I like it. Very future in a cool way. This one's actually neat too. I kind of dig this. So again, um, looks a little bent. <laughs> it needs to be like that. And uh, this is fine, though you see how it's like here and here, and then here it's very flat. I would have liked to have seen the same kind of wrinkles here, here. Like you see there's wrinkle, 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 but then it's one, one crease. Right, so that looks like it's filled there. It's supposed to be this, and I'm fine with that, but I think I would have liked the texture to be there. This is completely flat. Very interesting mini though. Again, I actually really dig the pose. I really like the like huge, ridiculous, kind of weird looking kind of cowl shoulder pad thingy. Um, the weapon here attached to whatever God's name this is is also kind of neat. But yeah, it, it does kind of suck to see this bent a little bit. And I think like the whole the whole hand i don't know it just seems bent to me i don't know what it is i think it needs to be just out like that versus like that cool design though like a very unique looking all right last one we got this guy who's just kind of uh judging you he's not really ready to fight he's just gonna stare you down love the inner cloak that's a nice touch i didn't see any other minis like that so he's gonna have some inner lining to keep warm which makes total sense it's kind of like this breathing apparatus still again. Um, a little top knot looks cool. Um, yeah, overall, I think this one, love the wrinkles. Very deep wrinkles. This would look great if you paint it, I think. Um, and uh, then, you know, just kind of like a belt and, and then the folded arms. But I, I, I like this one a lot. It is assembled here, but I think it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a gap there, but, um, well, no, because I think this is supposed to be part of the cloak. If it had just been his neck, I, I would have been okay with kind of a recess there, but I think that's supposed to be part of the cloak, in which case there's a big old gap there for the cloak. So besides, I think that assembly, this looks pretty good. Um, and again, I really like the cloak inside there. Well, all right, guys, that is everything. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that unboxing. It was very interesting to look at this. It's always fascinating for me to see uh, minis that are like at a different scale like this. It's very, very interesting. I'm normally one for larger minis, but uh, for some games, I think it makes sense to go a little bit smaller. And this might definitely be one of them. All right, here you can see what's on the back of the map. Uh, what, again, it's not the neoprene mat, which I showed earlier, but <laughs> it looks pretty cool. I dig it. It's just the map with kind of a, a, a fade and then the uh, logo on there. So I thought that was quite nice. It folds out pretty nice, too. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, which is uh, good to see as well. It seems to be pretty robust. I'm not seeing any peeling or any weirdness around there. It actually feels pretty darn solid, which is nice. It looks to lay out flat as well. So, all right, that is it. That is Steam Watchers. I'm going to be reading the rule book. I'll be playing it. I'll let you guys know what I think soon enough. And uh, with that, I guess I'll let you guys go. Again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed the video. If you did, again, on the way out, please leave a like. I really appreciate it. It helps a lot. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye, guys.